In this video, we'll explore a Wi-Fi tally lamp called Telema. It is um, from a Portuguese individual, and I think it is a very, very good option if you need a wireless tally lamp. We have wire tally lamps at Skyhoy. You can buy our tally lamps with a cable connection. This is how we go about it. We don't want to create a wireless version ourselves, so we will rather support someone else who does it really good already. These lamps, they are only powered by USB, so I'll now plug them in. I, I have two lamps, as you can see, number one and number two. And uh, when they power up and they connect to your Wi-Fi access point, then they turn purple. And um, they are now both online. The whole configuration of these, you will need to um, yeah, read about that from the uh, manufacturer himself. And um, all I want to do is to show you how we can integrate that with a Blue Pill product. So I have my uh, trusty Blue Pill server here, which is uh, running the Telema application. And uh, I have basically set it up, pointed it to the IP address of each of these lamps. So just quickly to show you, if you go to that IP address, you have like the Tele lamps own settings and so on. And uh, you need that IP address set up inside Blue Pill for each of the lamps you want to enable. So you basically add more lamps by adding more entries here, setting up that IP address and activating them. So this is how it works in terms of configuration. But luckily, all this has been nicely described on our wiki, wiki page. So if you go here on the Skahoi wiki and search for Telemare, then you find information about how all this is done, adding lamps, configuration, testing them with the Raw Panel Explorer tool, uh, how Reactor works with it and all that. So essentially what we are now going to look at is more or less what we um, uh, find in this article. Uh, on the Raw Panel Explorer, you see that the uh, XP Telema is uh, popping up here on the port that we specified in the configuration. So that would be this port right there, which is where it's enabled or available as a Raw Panel device. Um, so now we are uh, on the lamp and now I could select lamp number one, basically turn it on and you see it's turned on in white. I can turn on lamp number two and turn that on as well and I can pick a different color for it. So this is essentially what we'll do when we associate it with Tally inside of um, Reactor. But you can, as you see, select like any color that you want. It's just like an LED, uh, an advanced LED basically over Wi-Fi. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the blue pill here and see how could this be integrated with a um, video switcher. So basically I already did um, before this, I. Um, we could also do this over again. So maybe actually let's just create a new project and I'll show you exactly how that would work. Tally test, all right? So save, 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 save. And then we'll basically add, so we'll just add it from the network here. And um, then I'll add the ATEM switcher as well. So the ATEM switcher is available now on the network here. I uh, have that connected too. And uh, what about ATEM software control? that needs to be pointed over to my ATEM Mini, which is this guy. Okay, so I have my ATEM control here. We'll need that in a moment because we wanna see that something is actually happening. So um, what I need to do is to add a device. So I'll basically select my ATEM switcher already and uh, we should now be able to see how this is uh, working with the lamps. The lamps are not responding. Let me just quickly check if they are actually enabled. Yes, they are, so that is fine. Um, so if I turn this on, tally, tally, tally. Oh, I need to set the ME bus. Okay, I need to set ME bus number one. And now we see the lamps are reflecting. So sometimes you need to do more than just set up here. You need to actually look at the settings that might be missing a few pieces of information. And let's try with the um, ATEM software. So, yep, it does work as you would expect um, for these two lamps, all right? So that's just nice. I wonder if you, um, yeah, if we should also try to actually see how we could configure this for like anything. Now we just made it easy out of the box to pick this configuration and then select your tally device, which could also have been like a vMix system or TriCaster or Kros or some other switching system. And it would pick up tally from that because we kind of prepared things. But what if we basically create a custom configuration? So new as, whatever okay now custom configuration and uh, still we have the atom switcher here but i'll show you what would the process be like if we just wanted to use these as lamps with red and green or whatever you can go into configuration here 
and uh, we have the, the new new as whatever configuration selected. We are on the background layer, and that is great. Let's just zoom in so we can see the thing. If I click the lamp, I could actually go just turn on the color. So if you create an empty behavior and cancel that dialog, show more, go to feedback, and you select the intensity of, of the lamp. Then you see right now it's dimmed. If I turn it on, it will be even more uh, intense. And if I turn it off, it will be off. Okay, so I can turn it on and I could select a color from my color selector here. And that would be one way to like force a color onto it. And you can do that in a conditional way. So if you add conditional feedback, you can basically say, yes, it's going to be blue by default. But if I set up a certain condition, then it should be some other color like green. Okay. And that condition could be linked to, um, uh, let's edit this one. It could actually be linked all the way back to a device call like the atom switcher. So we could select the atom switcher and uh, essentially find programs input video source. That would be a good one for ME number one. And if program input video source for ME number one is equal to, and let's just pick the value one, submit, then we now have a conditional feedback. That means that as we are actually where we are right now, we would imagine that one to be so I probably made a mistake. Um, maybe it's linked to the device index variable that I'm using, because this might not be I think I'll just remove selection and select this one specifically. Yes. Okay. I know it's a little bit technical, but the device index is a way for us to select devices based on a variable used a whole lot when you have cameras, not so much when you have a single switcher. So let's just change this over and see. So Blackmagic ATEM switcher device ID number one program input video source for ME number one equals one. And that condition should now be true, actually. So you can see that I based on this condition, I can turn the lamp on and off. Um, it's also possible to essentially just do that this by selecting associating it with, with a program in uh, preview um, input select here. And uh, let's say input number four because that is already programmed to give you red and green color uh, since this is what we use on buttons on all our panels. So this action would be perfectly fine for a tally lamp like this one. And in this, let's say, uh, let's, oh, by the way, simulation tool is cool, right? Because that will also show you these things. So if I get to cam four, then yes, we turn on the second lamp as well because I just programmed it to do so. And if I cut, then it's turning on red as well because it is programmed into the behavior I just assigned that it should do exactly that. All right, so that was a little bit advanced configuration as well. So you have seen both. How can we get uh, go about this by having just a quick out of the box configuration and associating a switcher system? Or what if we want to use Reactor 2.0 with the easy one click assignable behaviors over here to assign actions to it? And of course, you can always go deeper, as I also showed you, so you can customize the feedback to exactly the color you want and based on conditions, also that it reacts to changes in the environment. Thanks for watching this video. And if you are curious for more and have questions, write them to innovationlab at scarhoy.com. I am in the other end. I would be happy to talk to you, get your feedback and be inspired for more cool videos in the future.